My name is Kristen. I'm 15 years old and I go to the Hershey Montessori School in Huntsburg, Ohio. This year, my ninth grade biology class spent two months researching and preparing an objective presentation on the impacts and benefits of the power lines that First Energy wishes to construct across the street from our school on State Route 528. After studying First Energy's proposal and researching what these lines will do to the land, we've concluded that putting the power lines through this particular land would not be beneficial to the future of Ohio and its residents. During our studies, we learned about the idea of pedagogy of place. Pedagogy of place has a lot to do with learning how to protect your place, and what that involves is really getting into what's going on around you and learning about it because you can't really defend something that you know nothing about. In order to get to know this place, we went to our neighbor Mike Ushak's property and walked the proposed power line route. On the proposed corridor, we encountered beautiful fields, pristine woodlands, and wetlands that serve as a habitat to many species that are undeniably important to our ecosystem. Seeing what wonderful natural resources exist on this property alone, we decided to investigate what the environmental impact of the power lines would be. I think that the implications of this project on the land are negative in almost every way. In reading First Energy's application to the Ohio Power Siting Board and researching the biodiversity that exists on this land, we concluded that First Energy has not taken into account the full impact that the power lines will have on the environment. 40% of First Energy's criteria in ranking their routes is based on environmental factors. First Energy's application states that the Ohio Department of Natural Resources, Division of Natural Areas and Preserves, and the Ohio Department for Natural Resources, Division of Wildlife, were contacted regarding the potential for occurrence of rare, threatened, and endangered species within the project study area. This indicates that First Energy has not conducted a survey of the ecology that actually exists within the actual proposed corridor. They simply have a rough list of what is likely to occur in Geauga County. This lack of definite information is disturbing to me as a future leader of Ohio. Because First Energy has refused to perform their own data collection, my class decided to conduct a BioBlitz. Although we did not discover any species designated as endangered, possibly because of the day's rainy conditions, and because the time of year was not conducive to finding wildflowers known to exist in this area, who's to say we shouldn't still work towards protecting them? Protecting only endangered species is a very ineffective way of defending our ecology. I don't see why we should wait until an organism becomes endangered to protect it. What sense does that make? Not only will these power lines be destroying a large amount of biodiversity, but there are also 15 streams on the 528 route that will be crossed by the 60-foot construction zone, one of which First Energy has qualified as high quality. On the Clay Street route, there will be 2,570 feet of stream within the 60-foot construction zone, two of which are qualified as high quality. Neither of these routes is ideal or even acceptable to construct a power line on, as these streams are a necessary part of the area's ecosystem. First Energy says that they have taken these factors into account but these two options are still ranked as the top two, despite the high environmental impact the power lines will have on both of the areas. 40% of First Energy's criteria is based on land use. First Energy based most of their land use evaluation on public land such as cemeteries, parks, and hospitals. I was kind of struck that they didn't at least use the agricultural land as a gauge for land that's useful because that is something that people uh, make their living off of, and it's something that's very important to this part of northeastern Ohio. The major mistake made by First Energy is that these are small farms. Most are somewhere between 100 and 200 acres. When a 60-foot corridor is cut through these farms, it severely impacts the farmer's ability to cultivate their crops. Farming is not a lucrative business to begin with, and if their profits are minimized by the power line, these farmers will have no choice but to leave. This will open the doors for developers to come and build residential areas that require even more power. According to the Geauga County Planning Commission, a recent study shows that every state in the nation is sacrificing irreplaceable prime agricultural land to a fragmented, sprawling pattern of development. About one million acres of agricultural land is being lost per year in the United States. Ohio is ranked number two in the country with respect to the percentage of farmland acreage converted to urban development over the last five years. It is important to remember that food production is a very real thing. 
Someone has to grow the food, someone has to harvest it. Currently, we import a high percentage of our food from out of state, some even out of the country. With gas prices becoming so high, food will soon reach prices that are unaffordable by the average consumer. At that point, we will be left to rely on local farmers, farmers that, if this power line is constructed, may have moved to other areas, making food harder and harder to acquire. How then is agricultural land not scored as one of the most important ways that a land can be used? If we wish to attain the comfortable, well-fed lifestyle that we are accustomed to, we must act now and construct these power lines in a place that will not disturb our future. It's going to be here for a really long time. It's not just a, oh, we're going to put this up for a month or two and then take it down. It's going to be here for probably the rest of our lives. So I think we have to decide if we want it here and if we need it here for the rest of our lives. These power lines will not just influence the adults in this area right now. We, the adolescents and the children that live here now, are the future of Ohio. Right now, however, the conditions that we will be left with if the power lines are constructed seem pretty dire. What would happen if all of us, those that will be Ohio's future leaders, voters, and employees, choose to live in a place with a greater vision towards responsible green energy? When I interviewed my classmates, I asked the question, will you choose to live in Ohio as an adult if these power lines are constructed? No, I would. I wouldn't stay in Ohio. Less inclined to live in I Ohio think as I get older. this would be a negative influence. It on wouldn't be I'm really worth it for me to Ohio stay in a state that future, doesn't really appreciate that exactly what's important that natural areas to the masses. and agricultural areas are it's not. It's definitely defined. going to influence whether I want to stay in Ohio. Everyone in my class stated that they would choose to live in a place that values the needs of its consumers and is striving for green energy rather than in Ohio, where CEI is destroying valuable agricultural and wild land. Ohio is not doomed to lose its residents, workers, and leaders. If First Energy, in conjunction with the current leaders of Ohio, choose to construct a sustainable economy and advocate responsible energy, we may very well increase our productivity rather than destroy it as we will on our current path. I think that Ohio should, and First Energy should put m much more emphasis on using green technologies because obviously coal and other expendable resources are not going to be around forever. Putting emphasis on green and creating a green infrastructure in Cleveland especially would be not only a boost for the city but also be intelligent long term. If Ohio supported green energy, we would create more jobs save money, and make less of an impact on the people and other species that live here. By supplying green energy technologies, such as solar panels and windmills, other places would need to purchase them from us. This would boost our economy. I feel that sustainable energy is a necessary step um, that the world has to take, and I am optimistic in thinking that we can do that. We would also need people to install the new energy, as well as create the means of producing energy, creating jobs for the future residents of Ohio. This is the positive way to create our future. I hope that First Energy and the Ohio Power Siting Board realize the damage that this project will have on the land, our livelihood, and on our future. I hope that those people deciding the fate of this area will look at what could happen to the future of their children and make the right choice. Choose to work towards sustainability, towards responsible energy, and towards a better future. It's our future that we have to worry about, and if we don't worry about it, then no one else is going to.